one of the things that um, I just thought about was uh, about Lydia. And uh, if we can turn to Acts chapter 16, Acts chapter 16. <clears throat> Paul, we, uh, we see in verse 9 that Paul had a vision in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia. And... Uh, <clears throat> As assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel unto them. Verse 11. Therefore, losing from Troas or sailing from Troas, we came straight with a straight course to Samotrosia and the next day to Neapolis. <clears throat> and from there to Philippi, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia and a colony. We were in that city abiding certain days. Verse 13. On the Sabbath, we went out of the city by a riverside where prayer was custom, uh, customarily to be made. And we sat down and sp spake unto the woman who, whom they met there. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of the purple of the city of Thyatira, who worshipped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized in her household, she besought us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house, abide there. And she constrained them. And... <clears throat> Here we see Paul. <clears throat> Paul was going, uh, someone called Paul to, in, in a dream, saying that come over to Macedonia to help us. And then Paul was actually planning to go and <clears throat> to Macedonia. I think this is his second missionary journey that he was traveling. Uh, and um, in, the in the second missionary journey that he was going to, he went to Thyatira, Troas, and then Samotracia and Neopolis, and then he comes over to Philipp Philippi, which is part of Macedonia. And when he comes over there, you know, Paul never keeps quiet. He's constantly... He says, we are called to preach the gospel unto them. He was set apart as an apostle to the Gentiles. And he started preaching there. And verse 13, you know, the Jews, uh, what should I say? Uh, uh, they kicked the Christians or the Jews who became Christians out of the synagogue. They didn't allow them to enter in. They, they didn't give them permission. So those Paul used to debate with them in the synagogue. Some of them refused to entertain Paul and the Christians, the disciples of Christ into synagogue. So we see that on in verse 13, on the Sabbath, we went out of the city by the riverside and Philippi, that's a beautiful coast, a coastline that is uh, facing the Medit Mediterranean, and it is really beautiful. So Paul, we see Paul going there, and then <clears throat> what does he do there? Why did they go to the riverside? They went there for prayer. The early church never met in church buildings like people today are so accustomed to build churches. People think building churches is they are doing service to God. Sorry, that is not ministry. That is not any kind of service that you do. 
in the ministry by building a church. People are so much into that. And all the more recently I'm coming and seeing, oh, we are building so many churches in the village. Building of churches is not what God has called us to. The church is, I'm just digressing for a minute. The church is the people of God. The church is the bride of Christ. The church is the body of Christ. It's not a building that we look at. The building can be destroyed. Like someone else has built a building in a wrong place and now they are demolishing his church. So what? People are making a you and cry. Oh, our church is being desecrated. That is not what God is building. God is building his people. His people are called living stones. They are built up one upon the other. They are the church of Christ. So we see that Paul, he goes for prayer. Paul and the disciples and all the Christians there together, they go over. And, and they sit down. And there was the, probably this woman, this Lydia is a businesswoman. The name Lydia means beautiful. It also means a noble one. And Lydia is a seller of purple. Purple is being sold to the rich. Purple is being sold to the nobles. And her name rightly fits that, saying that she is selling purple to the noble ones. And then in verse 14, it says a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple, she supply her of garments to the nobles and to the kings. That means she must be a very, very wealthy lady. Of the city of Thyatira. And then it, and mark those words, who worshipped God, heard us. She, she worshipped God. Was it the God of Taitira, the God of the Philippians, the God of Macedonians, or was she worshipping the true God? The, the Spirit of God has already worked in her, caused her to worship the true God. And what was Paul doing to, to them? Paul would have definitely given her the gospel. He would not have said, oh, Lydia, you will do better in your business. Lydia, you, you will prosper so that you can support the church. Lydia, you are such a rich woman. Paul would not have preached the prosperity gospel to Lydia. Paul preached the gospel. And when Paul preached, whatever Paul preached, she attended, it says, verse 14, she took heed or she attended to the things that were spoken of by Paul. And how did she understand all of it? Because the Lord opened Lydia's heart. The Lord opened her heart. The Lord, the Spirit of God was already indwelling in her, in her and that she was worshipping the true God. She needs to hear the gospel. She needs to hear the gospel. She needs to hear about Christ. Keep a finger here and turn with me to Romans. Romans chapter 10. And we, we know those passages so well. Verse 
verse 16. Verse 15. How shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, was not Paul sent along that way? This is another kind of Jesus going to, Jesus must go through Samaria to visit that woman. This is another kind of that incidence where Paul was called to Macedonia and he had to go there and you see the circumstances, the way they were thrown out of the synagogue and God ultimately directing them to come to this woman. Verse 16, Romans 10, 6, uh, 10 15. How shall they how shall they preach except they be sent as it is written? How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Lydia was a seller of purple, was a seller of good things, but Paul got her a better thing, a better king, the best of the nobles, Jesus Christ. Verse 16, but they have not also obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah said, Lord, who has believed the report? Verse 17, so then, Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing, and some versions will say the word of God, like King James Version, others will say hearing about Jesus Christ. She heard about Jesus Christ. Verse 15. Probably Paul would have stayed there for some time. Because it says, and when she was baptized, meaning she was not baptized immediately, but over a period of time, she listened to the teaching. She's, a, she, she's one of those faithful attendants of Bible studies. She listened earnestly. She, I like the word, the way that King James Version says that she attended unto the things that were spoken of for Paul. In other words, she was like a Berean searching whether that was true. She took heed to it. She looked at it intently. She then, you can see, she's an intelligent woman. A woman who just did not believe simply, but really looked at it intently, attended, took heed to it. And as the Lord opened her heart, she treasured it. Why am I saying she treasured it? Some versions will say she took heed to it, meaning she obeyed it because the spirit of God was at work in her heart. And then verse 15, and when she was baptized in her household, doesn't talk about her husband. It says her household. It could be her husband and all the people in the house, her children, or it could be her parents and her siblings. We don't know. But there was such a work of God that, that took place that the whole household was baptized. What did she say? Look at the response of her to Apostle Paul. She besought them. She begged them. She says, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord. In other words, she's saying, 
if you have found that I'm faithful to the Lord, if you have found that my salvation is genuine, if you are saying that I am truly an elect, if you have judged me to be the sheep of the Lord, I'm really amazed at a faith who says, judge me. And if I'm found to be the Lord's, come into my house. If I'm not the, of the Lord, please don't come. In other words, what a lady is she? She says, Look, look at the way she says, if you have judged me, what is her attitude? Check me thoroughly. See if, if my salvation is genuine. Don't look at my external behavior. Look at what God has done in my heart. If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, how, how do you think Paul would have judged her to be faithful to the Lord? Isn't it by what she was learning from Paul? Isn't it that Paul would have noticed her that she was being convicted of the truth? Many times people say, oh, they will come slowly. Most of the time people come for a blessing to Christ and we think they are saved. No. She didn't. The Lord was the one who opened her heart so that all that Paul thought she could receive it. How did she receive it? I'll tell you. She received it with joy. She received it with joy. And we will come to that. Why am I saying that she received it with joy? And then she says, if you have judged me to be faithful, Faithful to the Lord, please come into my house. Come into my house, abide there, and she constrained us. You know, the church of Philippi started in her house. The church of Philippi started in Lydia's house. And it is one of those most beautiful churches that we can look at. If you can turn with me to Philippians. Chapter one, the way Paul is saying, Paul and Timothy, the servant of Jesus Christ to all the saints. In Christ Jesus, who are at Philippi with the bishops or overshears and deacons. By the time Paul was writing this letter, this lady must have been so instrumental in preaching the gospel that there were so many other churches that came up because he talks of overshears and deacons in plurals. And I presume it's they, 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 the early church did not have a single popish pastor. The early church had plurality of elders. There would have been plurality of elders as well as I also believe there were other churches that were established. And he says in verse 3, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. 
this church no mention of sin is written in this letter at all why this was a gospel preaching church look at verse 12 but i would you should understand brethren that the things which happen unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel so that my bonds in christ are manifest in in all the palace and in other places in what sense is lydia being a seller of purple to fall to the palaces to the noble people and the gospel was being preached everywhere she was a channel She didn't just sit down and say, oh, I got, I'm saved, me and my house. Let's, I'm so happy that we are having a prayer meeting in my house every day. So I will be blessed. My business will grow. She didn't do that. Though Paul was jailed in Philippi, the, we talk of the Philippian jailer, but yet, how could they be so close and friendly with Paul, giving him all the freedom, had it not been for the influence of Lydia, who had such influence with the nobles because she was the seller of purple? That they gave them such freedom, though he was imprisoned, yet he had freedom to move people to visit him. I firmly believe it was the, it God had kept Lydia there for Paul's sake and for the furtherance of the gospel. Lydia was not ashamed to be associated with a prisoner later on. Verse 14, and many of the brethren in the Lord waxing confident by my bonds I'm much more bold to speak the word without fear. And I believe Lydia will be included in this. Some preach Christ even of envy and strife, some also of goodwill. Turn, turn with me further to chapter 4. Uh, okay, Th chap chapter 2. Verse 25. Yet I supposed it necessary to send to you Aphroditus, my brother and companion in labor and fellow soldiers, but your messenger and he that ministered to my wants. For he longed after you all and full of heaviness because that you heard that he had been sick. For indeed he was sick nigh unto death, but God had mercy on him and not on him only, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. I sent him therefore more carefully that when you see him again, you may rejoice that I may be less sorrowful. Receive him therefore in the Lord with all gladness and hold in such reputation. Or I esteem because for the work of Christ, he was nigh unto death, but regarding his life, not regarding his life to supply your lack of service towards me. You know, this book has almost 11 times the word rejoice and the word joy comes in this book almost five times. And look at the affection they had to Paul, the way they supported him and supplied all that they needed. This was a church that was so bound together in unity. 
starting in Lydia's womb. Come to chapter four. You know, wherever women are there, they're prone to be trouble. And there was trouble here that Paul had to write, I beseech Eudeus and beseech Syntyche that they be of the same mind and the Lord. I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women that labored with me in the gospel with Clement also and with other fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. Look at what he's specially mentioning. Help, I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, a true companion, help these women, those women that labored with me in the gospel. We saw last week Mary Magdalene. There are many women who helped Paul in the gospel and the names are not written here, but it's surely written in the name, in the book of life. What joy that is. Heaven knows them. The world may not know who these women are, but heaven has recorded the names, the way they ministered along with Paul in the gospel. And Eudeus and Syntyche would have helped Paul so much. We, you know, in Acts chapter 15, I think, uh, Paul and Barnabas are 14 of 15. You have Paul and Barnabas parting ways. They might, these two women might have been of two different kinds of temperaments. One might be soft, one might be adventurous and, and uh, bold, one might be fearful. But Paul says, help these women. They are my companion. They are, they are my yoke fellows. They carry the yoke of Christ along with me. And then he says in verse 4, rejoice in the Lord always. It's an imperative command that Paul is writing to the Philippians. It's an, that you should rejoice at all times. He says with an emphatic, emphatically saying again, I say rejoice. And then he goes on to say, uh, verse five, let your moderation, your gentleness be known unto all men. For the Lord is at hand. Verse 6, be careful, be anxious for nothing. Verse 10, but I rejoiced in the Lord that now, at the last, your care of me had flourished again, wherein you were also careful, but you lacked opportunity. Not a, that I speak in respect of want, for what I have learned in whatsoever state I am, there to be content. The Philippian church, which was born out of this home, home of Lydia, was a church that gave, that blessed the people of God that was very, very forthright in its gospel. The woman knew the gospel so well. Paul calls them my yoke fellows. And the woman who helped him with the gospel 
they need not be great preachers, but all that they did was simply open the door. They served the saints. And he says, your names are written in the book of life. Lydia was, the name Lydia was so appropriate for her. She was a beautiful one. That God has made her beautiful with the precious garments of salvation and the robe of righteousness that was put on her. She was a noble one because she had Christ in her, the King of Kings. Come back to Acts 16. Look at what she says. If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house. And abide there. And there the church was born. And what a black, what kind of a church is it? A church with when, when Paul has to write to them, he is encouraged himself by saying, I am rejoicing with you all. He doesn't, other than making peace between Udias and Syntyche, he encourages them to rejoice. Though he writes in every letter of his, he writes against the Pharisees the work of the flesh. In every letter of his, he writes the gospel and the justification by faith. That is his standard message. And he writes the same thing. And he says, you rejoice at all times, for you know Christ. She doesn't need to be motivated. She doesn't need a motiva motivational speech. She doesn't need a, a hymn to be sung, Come to Jesus, those beautiful hymns that people sing. She had the spirit of God that is that was actively working in her. In the gospel, was so precious to her. May we have more Lydia's in our midst. <laughs>